So today, when we go through uh, GP to Business Central, these are the topics that we're going to cover initially. So we're going to talk through segments and dimensions. Uh, so GP to BC, we're going to look at number series. Then we're going to talk about smart lists versus the list pages in Business Central. We're going to take a look at some journals, both in GP and Business Central. And then we're going to take a look at Management Reporter, which is typically what you're using in Dynamics GP. And then we're going to look at the financial reports available in Business Central. So the first place that we're going to start here is segments versus dimensions. So in Dynamics GP, if you go into your account format set up under the administration and company section within uh, GP, you can go in and you can see how your chart of accounts is set up. And that's what this account format is defining. So out of the box, GP allows you to have 66 characters and 10 segments. Typically, when we've done an implementation for GP, we've set it at a maximum account length of 45. And then generally, we're in that five, three to five segment range. So in this case, in this example, my account length is actually nine characters, and I have it broken into three segments. So in the middle of the window here, you can see that my first segment is my division. It's three characters. My second segment is my account or my natural account. So my accounting account number, my main account, and that's four characters. And then my department is two characters. Then down below, we identify that main segment ID, in this case, as account, and we separate our segments with a dash. So when we go take a look at Business Central, and I'm just gonna open up Business Central here, when you look at your chart of accounts in Business Central, really the main key that you're gonna see when you go into that chart of accounts is seeing just your main account number. What Business Central does instead is Business Central uses what's called dimensions. And so under finance and dimensions, we have the ability to go in and define how we want to slice and dice our data and how we wanna be able to report on that data as it relates back to our chart of accounts. So in this case, I have dimensions of area, business group, customer group, department, purchaser, sales campaign, and salesperson. If I go in and look at my department, so I go to the department and look at the dimension values, these are the departments that I have available or that I've set up for my company in Business Central. Now you can have up to eight different dimensions within Business Central and an unlimited number of values related to those dimensions. So if you also wanted to say, put something technical in there, or um, maybe you had some other service activities that you wanted to split out and get more detail on in your reporting, then you could add those different dimension values here. If say you had a number of different customer groups that you wanted to track, so maybe you track schools and hospitals and uh, private businesses and libraries or however you wanted to break down that data that you want to be able to report on. And so when you're looking at setting up your accounts in Business Central, one of the key things that you want to remember is what is the data that you need to be able to get out of the system and report on? What do you need to see? And that's going to help us set up what these dimensions need to look like. The other benefit of doing dimensions in this respect and then only having that main chart of accounts is now you don't have to exponentially grow your chart of accounts like you do in GP. So anytime you would go in and add a new division or a new department, you would have to build out all of those GL account numbers because your account numbers are segmented. So you have your division, your account, and your department. And now anytime you add to those, you're gonna add that whole block of accounts to move forward. So that's one of the, the big benefits of going to Business Central is if you have a chart of accounts that's continually growing, this is a really good way to do that rather than growing exponentially that chart of accounts. So with uh, the next area that we want to take a look at, we're going to look at the number series. So this is a screenshot of the payable setup options window in Dynamics GP. And in this window, what I wanted to call out was our next temporary vendor ID, our next voucher number ID, and our next payment number. These are all the IDs and define for GP when you have a transaction, what that next transaction is going to be. In GP, you have this setup done at each of the module levels. So you have this in payables, you'll have a similar in receivables, 
you have similar in inventory, you're going to go in and you're going to define what those next numbers are. In Business Central, they have put, uh, Microsoft has put all of those numbers together in what's called the number series page. So if we go in and we look at the number series, here you're going to see all of the different number series that are set up for this particular company. So we have our banks and we have our ACHs. We have our customers here defined, and this is what the starting number and ending number is. Then we can go in and we see our employees and our fixed assets and our journals, payment journals. Same thing as we scroll down further in the list, we're going to have our purchase orders, uh, things related to inventory and sales. So you, you really have it all condensed in one area that these are where you can define all of those number series within Business Central. Within this window, you also have the ability, let's say for your sales credit memos, if you wanted to go in and do several different number series, which you could do or drive based on a particular starting date, you would be able to define that here. So if I wanted to use this S-CR1001 through 299, and maybe I only wanted to use it for the first quarter, I could do that. If there was a, a change that I wanted to make, then I could start that up, say, in the second quarter. And going forward, then we would use the number series identified based on the date range. You also have the ability to choose how you want to increment your numbers by. So in this case, I'm just incrementing by one. But you could, if you wanted to, increment by five characters or 10 characters. And so as you created a new document, that increment by number is going to increase based on what you have set here. In addition to that, you have the ability, if I go back up to customers, you have the ability to go in and say that based on a template, so very similar to how GP uses class IDs to group customers together. So you could have your school customers if you wanted to group them that way, and maybe those post when you do your sales transactions to a different revenue account, sales account, than what your hospitals post to. So maybe you have a hospital's revenue account and you maybe have a school's revenue account. Business Central will allow you to do things like set up customer templates so that you can then either choose a template, which will give you your default settings, very similar to how a class works in Dynamics GP, or when you go in to set up a customer, you could choose from a different customer number series that you wanted to. So if you wanted to identify that school customer grouping, not only with the template, but you could define the number series for that grouping as well. So if schools, maybe you wanted to have it uh, schools-C0010 and then increment those numbers. Or if you wanted hospitals, it could be h dash c and then the number series. So really it's up to you, but there's a lot of flexibility with how you use those number series in Business Central. You also have the ability in those number series to choose to use only the default numbers. And if in some cases you actually need to do like a manual number override, you can do that within Business Central also just by checking that box. Now, a lot of times we'll use that manual number override when we're doing that initial load of customer data. So that's where that box comes in handy because we want to be able to bring in your customer numbers as you have set them when we're doing those initial data loads into Business Central. You can also choose to group your, your number series selections by date order, and you can identify if you want gaps in those number series. So in some scenarios where maybe you're doing sales orders or sales invoices, you may not want to include gaps in those numbers. So if you want to be able to track straight through and see that your numbers always increment. So you could get into some compliance uh, requirements where you don't want to have any gaps in those numbers series for say sales documents or maybe purchasing documents. So you have that ability within Business Central to do that. So the next area that we're going to take a look at is smart lists versus list pages. So smart lists in Dynamics GP, and this is a screenshot of that. So when you go into your smart lists and I'm looking at payables transactions here and I've selected the open AP. So within open AP, you can see and just this base list that's been created is I've got my voucher number, my vendor ID, 
document type, document date, document number, current transaction amount. If there's more information that I want to see on these traction, transactions, I can go into the columns and I can choose from the available columns list. I can add that to my smart list. I can sort these as I want to. I can go into the search and I could restrict based on a, a particular, maybe a date or maybe a voucher number, num voucher number or a vendor ID. So maybe I only want to see one particular vendor. So within SmartList, you can do all of this and you can see all of your different modules listed here. When we go into Business Central, we can see those listings of particular areas wherever we go within the system. So as an example, if we're looking again at, we'll take those payables transactions. So if I go to purchasing and purchase invoices, this is going to show me all of my open purchase invoices that I have outstanding. So I can see I just have a handful here because I'm in a test environment, but I can see that these are the invoices that I have available. Now within this window, I can go in and I can filter on this. I also have the ability to see any attachments. So if my vendors have, say, a W9 attached to them, I could see that here. I can also see additional vendor details based on the vendor that I have highlighted here. I have it selected. So again, my vendor number, the name, I can see a phone number here, an email address, and a contact. If I want to close this, this is called a fact box. I can close that, and then I can see additional information related to my purchase invoices in this case. I also have the ability here to do some filtering and restricting. So this filter here, if I click on that, I can create a filter and I'm going to choose to say filter my list by my vendor number. So if I go in and I want to filter my list, actually, sorry, by my document number. So if I want to say that I want to see documents 107212 and I want to see uh, for a range. So maybe I want to see those last three then I can choose to see just those documents. And I'm going to tab off of that. And now when I filtered that list, now I can see just those documents. I have the ability, similar to what you have in, in SmartList in GP, you can go in and you can create fa favorite reports. So you don't have to keep recreating based on what your filter and your columns that you've added. You can save those as favorites. Well, I've done the same thing here where I've created a list that just shows uh, my Fabricam vendor. So if I click on that, now I can see all of the transactions that I have in place for my Fabricam vendor. This list has been saved, so I can see this list anytime I go into this window by clicking on that saved ID, or I'll see it up across the top of my menu bar. So here I can see my Fabricam transactions, or I could see all because that list is also safe. So when I click on all, it's defaulted back to where I have my filter here. So I'll just remove that filter. And now back on all, I see all of my outstanding purchase or rather my open purchase invoices uh, within the system. When you close this, that just gives you more space on the screen. And again, when you look at your your menu line across the top here where I see all I'm, means I'm seeing all of my open purchase invoices. Again, if I want to go look at just my Fabricam transactions, I can do that and select that here. All right, the next area that we're going to take a look at is journals. So this is your transaction entry journal within Dynamics GP. What we're seeing here is our journal entry number, our batch ID, transaction date, our source document, our reference ID, currency ID, project and tasks. So these are two new recently added user defined fields. These are available for setup in your general ledger setup window. And then we have our journal entry down below here. Within Business Central, Business Central is driven totally by journal entries. So virtually every entry you make is going to be into a journal. So I'm going to go back to Business Central here and we're going to look at these even purchase invoices as an example, and then we'll go look at a general ledger entry. So when I go in and I look at a purchase invoice transaction, again, I'm seeing my fact box on the far right side, and I'm just going to minimize that to get that out of the way. But then I want to show you how this purchase invoice window looks. So in this purchase invoice, we have a header section. 
and then we have our line section. So very similar to what you see now when you go in and you do a purchase order. So your purchase order in Dynamics GP has that header section. You're going to fill in the base information. Who's the vendor? What's your posting date? In GP, you're going to add a batch to it if you want to save it. Uh, we've also, in this case, because we're doing a purchase invoice, we've got our vendor invoice number identified here. With NBC, you also have the ability to do some more customizing with the fields on the page. So if I do show more, I can see additional fields available that I can populate based on the needs of my business. So I've got my purchaser code. If I want to identify a campaign number, I could do that. Maybe I wanted to identify a different vendor address code. We could do things like track a responsibility center or see who's the assigned user to this transaction. All of these things can be reported on within Dynamics BC. The next area down below, we are seeing our purchase invoice line. So here we have the ability in Business Central to very similar to what your purchase order process looks like. You're gonna have this also for a purchase invoice process. So you always have that header and line combination, similar to what you're used to in GP when you do a purchase order or sales order. We have that ability to do a different different line types rather. So in this case, my first line item is an item, an inventory item. So it's a lamp. I'm ordering five of those. It has a unit measure code of pieces. Here's my unit cost. I can identify my tax area codes and then I get my line total. Then on the next line, if I want to do to a GL account, I can do that as well. So I can choose as an item type GL. And if I wanted to go down and do um, uh, 61. Uh, one of my expenses. So let's say for whatever reason, I was going to put a utilities expense on this transaction. I could do that here and I could put in a quantity of one and I can put in what my dollar amount is. That's not a realistic transaction. I understand that. Uh, but it's just an example that you can have those different item types. So when you're in Business Central, you only have one place to go enter in purchase invoices. And you can enter transactions, whether it's items, GL account, or even if you wanted to do things like enter to uh, resources or identify fixed assets or charge items. So charge items allow you to do things like landed cost. So how do you want to apply additional cost to a transaction similar to how you do landed cost in GP? And that's what a charge item does here. Within this page then, I'm just gonna click off of it and You'll see now that there's the three dots, sometimes called a kebab, and I can choose to delete that line here if I don't need it, and in this case, I don't. So once you've entered your journal here, now you have the ability to go in and you can preview post or you can post, or if you just back out of the window, the document will be saved, and that's gonna just remain on your open purchase orders list, or purchase invoices in this case. Once you, you're ready to post that through, then as you, when you post that transaction, then it's going to move to the posted purchase invoices. If we go look in finance at our general journals, we're going to have a similar look and feel of a journal here. So we can define our journals. So this is kind of like our batch information. So we have our name of our, trans, our batch, what's in it, or what's the description of it. We can identify a balancing account type. So where we do a general journal in GP and you do two lines, you do your debit line and your credit line. It could be to your expense account and your cash account. Um, not necessarily the best example, or you could do things like uh, maybe you've got an adjusting entry you need to make. So you're gonna have an expense and an AP transaction that you need to change or adjust uh, over the course of a month, or maybe it's something after year end and the auditors have given you, they're going to give you all those journal entries. So you're going to have your debits and credits and they're going to balance when you do your transaction. We can define our balance account and if we go into our monthly journal entries and take a look at that entry, what we're seeing here, again on the far right is the fact box. You're going to see information related to the transaction and then we've got our lines. So we're going to have our posting date, our document type, our document number, our account type. In this case, we've got GL account, but you could also choose things like customer or vendor or bank account or employee, depending on what you needed to make this entry for. And then once you do that, uh, if we do our account here again, 
I'm going to stick with my utilities expense. I have my description come through from my name. If I wanted to make an adjustment or make an addition to that description, I could do that here. And then I'm going to scroll over and I can put my dollar amount in here. So if it's $175 and then that balancing account that we defined at the batch level is going to default in. So in Business Central, while you absolutely can make two lines entries for your transactions, you don't have to because you can define that balance account at the time of the transaction on that same line. So you you can just put in where you know all of these particular transactions are going to balance against, in this case, the 10100 account. Similar process here. You can start the transaction. You can back out and save it. And then when you're ready to come in and post it, then you can preview post and then post that transaction and update your chart of accounts with the appropriate transaction information. So now I'm going to go back to GP and from our journals, the last area that we're going to take a look at is management reporter versus financial reports. So on the screen, I've got management reporter screenshot showing here. So we have our report definition. This is showing us the company name. So any company this is going to apply to. We have our detail level, whether it's financial account, uh, financial account and transaction in this case, but you can always limit based on what you need for that report. We define our base period and our base year. This is going to tell us what our report date of information is going to be. And then we have our building blocks, and this is the important part. So in Management Reporter, you're used to the concept of reports being made up of row definitions and column definitions. So here we've got our summary income statement. And if we look at our row definition here, you're seeing that summary income statement row definition. So we have our row codes. We have our description of what our line is. We have our subtotaling lines. We have our format codes. So what's going to show in the line? So in this line, we're going to have a dotted line. We're going to identify that this is our related. When we look at our total revenues, this is going to be a totaling line, and it's going to be made up of our row codes 130 through 250. So 130 through 250. So it's going to pick up all of our sales, sales returns and discounts, and other income. We're going to define our normal balance in this case. And then here we are identifying by account categories. So on your GL chart of accounts, you can not can you have to assign your account category but as long as you do that account categories yeah as long as you assign those categories on the accounts then you can group and make that setup of your uh, management reporter reports easier and as you add new accounts you don't have to make updates to your financial reports in mr because once you assign an account category, that's where the dollars are going to land from that account. Then when we go down and we look at our column definition, our column definition here, we're seeing the periodic and year to date default. And so that column definition, very similar layout. So we've got our header information here. This is going to show us our columns on our report. So we have our column type, whether it's a description or if it's a financial dimension, it's pulling that financial information from our general ledger account uh, summaries and details, depending on what kind of a report we're running and where we're pulling that data from. Our fiscal year that we're using, so coming in here, it's our base year, and then what periods are covered. So periodic, year to date, and then how are we fitting that in? So that is, that's how Management Reporter is. So now if we flip back over to Business Central, and we're gonna go in and take a look at our financial reports. So under finance, in financial reporting, this is where we can see very similar information. So we're looking at our income statement here. It's made up. Uh, well, this is our description. Then we have our row definition called M dash income. And then we have our column definition called M dash net change. So if I go into this report, it's very similar. So when we go in and we look at I'm going to start with our columns in this case. And actually, I'm going to go. How do I want to do that? I want to go uh, this way under our definitions, and it brings both our row definition and our column definitions. So I can go in and I can edit my column, or sorry, row definition first. 
And in this case, it's going to ask, ask you if you want to copy that and make and save that report. So I'm just going to call it uh, IS2. And what that's going to do is it's just going to make a copy of it. So if I go in and I make any changes to it, it's not going to impact that original report that I have. So similar in our row definition, just like looking at GP in Management Reporter, we have our row identifiers here, we have our descriptions, we have our totaling types. So what's going to happen here? When I look at my total income, I have a formula here. It's pulling from my row numbers. So P three zeros and a one through P eight, and here's my row uh, numbers. Then here we're pulling in our GL accounts. So that is one thing that's a little bit different. We're not, we're building our reports based on the actual account numbers, but you can do ranges of those account numbers as well. So in this case, similar to what I did earlier, where if I wanted to do a range of those purchase invoices, I can do totaling of my GL accounts here as well. So in this case, if I look at my 4,500 account and I'm going to pull all of the accounts, so I have this two little dots between there, and that allows you to do that range. So it's 4,500 through my 4,990 account. And then I've identified other accounts here. If I scroll down, I'm going to see similar activity down below, whether it's formulas, what my row columns that I want to include are. Uh, this is a good call out here in Business Central that if you want to do uh, individual numbers. So in this case, I want to look at my 60,001 and I want to look at my 61,990 account. The pipe is in between there to define that that's a 6001 to a 61,990. Further over, we can define what our row type is going to show us. So we want to see our row type of net change. We want to see the net amount. If we want to go in and show the opposite sign, so maybe I have a credit balance, but I want to show it as a positive, depending on what I'm working on. I can do that here so I can flip the sign. I have options as far as how do I want to show the, the data that's in here. So do I want to show it? Do I not want to show it? So am I using it for calculation? Maybe and it doesn't need to show up on my report. Or if any column is not zero, maybe I don't want it to show if it's zero. Or if it has a positive balance or a negative balance, maybe those are the only times I want those to show up. Then I can also choose to do some formatting here. So bold, italics, underline, and should there be a new page? So maybe your, rev your income statement goes across two pages and you want to make a logical split, say, between your revenue accounts and your expense accounts. So you can identify where's your new page cut off for that. So that's our row definition. Now I want to go into our column definition. And our column definition is a little bit different. So our column definition actually goes across. So a little bit different than what you're used to in GP is that we're going to have our column numbers listed here and then identify what those are. So whether we want to do formulas with those, if we want to do other, and I'm just going to bring up one that has a period and year to date, just so you can see the difference there. So we're identifying our current period information, our year to date information, our column type again. So whether it's a net change or year to date, what do we want to see for that? And what's our amount type? Is it a net amount or do we want to see a debit or credit amount? So it really depends, but you have that same flexibility. And then if we're pulling in budgets, we can do that just like you would pull in budgets in GP. And then how do you want to show this data, whether it's always never positive or negative. So once you have all of that defined, then when you come into this window, you can see down below, and I've got some of that information here. I'm just gonna make the page a little bit bigger. And you can see then based on what you've got set up in both your row and your columns, then you can see these totals as it's pulling data in, and you get that quick view of this. One of the really nice things with Business Central is virtually everything is you export goes to Excel, really easy to work with. You have options whether you want it to go to a PDF, whether you want it to go to Word or you want it to go to Excel. So I can choose to export that to Excel. I can choose to create a new document or if I have an existing one that I'm working with, I'm just going to create a new one quick that is going to create my Excel sheet and I will bring it over here as soon as it opens my other screen. 
almost open. There we go. So I will bring this over. And so this is bringing over just a very quick example of here's my income statement. I can make these bigger. You can do the edits in Excel as you need to. And you've got your data in.